Hey guys, just going to build one of these uh, ESP8266 programmers up um, using a design from uh, Oshpark. So, um, so yeah, so I've got the board. Um, very simply, just got a uh, line of connectors for the FTDI or the uh, CC340 uh, USB connector. Um, two switches, one resistor, one capacitor and a um, connector block anyway. Um, the resistor and uh, capacitor surface mount um, 805 size um, so yeah, so okay, let's get on with it and um, flux, makes life so much easier let's give it a shake um, just go over both pads um, Now, the best way to do this um, is to solder one side of the pad. Um, it makes it so much easier to then connect the board to. So if we um, I have to excuse any inaccuracies because I'm doing this at a distance so I don't get my big head in the way of the camera. So you'll notice there's uh, they just come in these long strips there about only two from a strip there. But um but yeah, so there's two capacitors stink and one do two boards, but I'll um, obviously only video one. Um, so I've trimmed two of these off. little guy out here um, and then I'll also pop the resistor out ok now the capacitor has no markings on so you just got to make sure you get the right one don't mix them up um, the uh, Resistor, however, you'll see, does have some markings. Now, I don't have any pliers with me currently, so I'm just going to use the tip of these cutters just to very gently pull that. So, since you've only put solder on one pad, whatever it might be, just uh, if you reflow that solder, it's quite small, so it should reflow quite easy. And then you can make sure you get it far enough along. And if you keep the soldering iron on there, you can nudge it the way you want. This is extremely difficult from a distance. Okay. So that's one side down. Okay, enough for chat there. Yeah, so he's a little bit wonky and I'm not totally um obsessed with this but it's uh it's nice to have it vaguely straight so again apologies if I get away the camera. Okay that's a bit better. And then what you can do is once you've got that one side in, correct side, you can then just go Just placed on the solder line, which is the bad way to do it. But if I hold that there, it will flow a bit. Okay. Okay. So there's no polarity for these. Uh, right way around to have them. Not with the SMD capacitors, um, like you would have with a traditional through hole. You'll notice they just uh, put in back of the frame. Very hard to see, but they're identical both sides. So, yeah, so what I'll do is I'll just same as before. Reflow that solder. Just place it on there. And then if you can, get where you want. 
Here's the tweezers or in this case snips directly on top and I apologize I've just pushed that out of frame there but yeah he's pretty he's straight but he's offset so no I'd like to get that and again I've managed to do this off camera so I do apologize but yeah that's a bit better now you've just got to be a bit careful when you um, do this because what it will do is like it did with the resistor there it will um, transfer the heat through um, so it will reflow the solder on the other side and then it'll, it's so light it will move about so be careful do that and then yeah it's okay but it's not perfect um, I would prefer that capacitor slightly further up um, but yeah, no, it's a good connection, that'll do for now. Um, in the case the switches are nice, they just um there's only one way you can put these in. Um, no, they fit that way, but if you try and fit them the long ways, they don't fit this way. Um, so you just put those through. Um, yeah, you can use a third hand at this point, but I don't think there's any real need. Um, okay, I'm just using some uh, slightly thicker solder, just um, slightly bigger pads, just to reflow a bit more on, um, and that can help you greatly by using, you know, the right gauge of solder for the right job. Um, makes life so much easier. Thinner great cage solder would work, but you'd be using that much more and your fingers would be running down um, that much quicker. And it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So, again, just uh, apologies. So zoomed in. Um, so, we're heating the back side of the switch up, the pin on the switch, I should say. Applying for solder from the other side, as you should, so we're not heating the solder directly. Um, just get a nice consistent flow. Solder line is fully at the temperature, so it's just flowing very nicely. Okay. A little bit more on that. Now it's pretty much flowed everywhere but it's nice just to it doesn't make it quite the end of the part. I don't know why but I just feel the need to just reflow it slightly. Um yeah. And then just clean the solder line now. Um I don't know how well he's gonna show up, but you can see the way it curves up like that and just nicely to the pin. Um really good joint. The switch is totally flush. And they should work fine. Um, next part is the ESP chip. What I like to do is just to um, move back to the thinner gauge solder at this point. Um, I'll just move that back on the shot. What I like to do is just get one, I like to try and not to pop it out. Um, you know, if you've got some blue tack or something like this, um, you can do that. Um, but you can just place a finger down, it's all good when you've got the switches which actually do depress <laughs> when you push down. Um, if you get one corner done, um, you place a finger on the other end and start popping out. Um, okay, so that's one done, and then you can see it's pretty perpendicular. But you know, if that's slightly um, askew or at an angle, you can just reflow that one part and just move it around as you need. Um, but yeah, this looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just go through and just solder these parts one by one. Okay.
put a back shot there. You could do this with a third hand, but it's um it's quite difficult. I find I need a new third hand. I think it's not uh, too heavy on the base. Um, so sometimes things move around a bit too much. Okay, I'll just clean the solder iron. Um, and the last part is the pith board. Yeah, it's just a case of measuring out what you need, and then these things just you know get the nail in there and just snap those away cleanly. You're left with what you need. And um, very similar to the other side, if you can just. Uh, and wedge them in. You could do the same thing with regards to um, some blue tack or something, but if you kind of do them in this order, it works out quite nicely. Um, and don't feel there's any need to to do that. Um, okay, so again, I've switched to the slightly larger gauge solder, and then you lock there. So that's slightly askew, so we can just refloor this one part. And you can kind of feel when it goes flat. Um, you, know, you could do it either way, but it's pretty close. Maybe it's just slightly over, so we can just again do that. Let the solder solidify. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, am I happy with that? Yeah, that's perfect now. So I've got that. And then it's just a case of stepping through. Um, using the higher gauge uh, solder. It's um, which flows quicker but also as well. Um, you find if you use the thinner gauge solder, um, you're just gonna go through your solder quicker. Um, so that reel's just not gonna last you as long. Um, Let's just have a look at those. Um, yeah, so I think those are pretty good, pretty secure solder joints. Um, good board, you can just tidy up these bears here and there. But yeah, that's it. So, in use, it's a case of uh, when you've got your FTDI or your CHC40 um, USB to serial plugged in, in case of doing the reset program, release the reset and then release the program and then your board's then in programming mode and off you can go and program it in the um, ESP points this way so it's kind of natural that you wouldn't have a pointing over the uh, the two buttons in Scratch um, other ones I've seen like when I've got it they have 10 pins until you kind of, kind of guess where you plug it in but, um, but no, it's pretty simple, nice board okay, cheers guys